My staff picked me. This is my destiny. Sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith. I finally know who I really am. Stargirl. New series Tuesday, May 12th. Stream free next day on the CW app. Hello, my name's Sean Holmes. And welcome today to this review on crossovers. Before we begin, I'd like to discuss that this show will be called Sean's G Crossovers. And instead of saying we or our, I will now use I or me for the continuation of this review. Let's begin. Today's discussion of crossovers is about CW Stargirl in connection with Jade for what I hope will be a possible crossover. Thanks to the recent Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, I know as well as others that CW Stargirl takes place on Earth 2. Earth 2 was a world that was destroyed in the final season of Arrow and were born in a new form in the last chapter of Crisis. Fortunately, nobody has to know any of that backstory to enjoy the Stargirl premiere. CW Stargirl is a fresh start with a new world and new heroes and new villains. If anything, Stargirl is at its weakest when it attempts to flesh out the history of this world and its incarnation of the Justice Society of America. The opening flashback is all over the map in terms of tone and attempts to combine superhero melodrama quippy and humor while not pulling off either one. Despite that rough start, the premiere quickly settles into a groove when it shifts focus to the story of Courtney Whitmore and her new stepfather, Pat Dugan. The series really thrives on the strong chemistry between the two leads and the awkward family bond they share. It's refreshing to have a show that is centered on a father-daughter relationship. For this and other reasons, Stargirl feels like neither the product of the Arrowverse nor DC Universe. The series has a clear Spielberg quality, like when Courtney tests out her new powers by wielding a cosmic staff that turns out to be a solid supporting character. The staff becomes CW's answer to the MCU's eccentric cloak of levitation which belongs to the MCU's Doctor Strange. It is a disappointment that the artwork of the old Earth 2 established in the Flash show has been phased out in favor of something more traditional and contemporary for the Stargirl episodes. The new series does find more stubble ways of acknowledging the old school roots of the Justice Society's doo-wop heavy soundtrack, cheesy nature of the costumes and the vague leave it to beaver aesthetic nature of Blue Valley. Stargirl is not just another Erebus offshoot. And that is fine. Stargirl is a charming, wholesome superhero series that the world could use right about now. Despite its rough opening act, the pilot quickly finds its footing as it hones in on the story of Courtney Whitmore and her strained family relationship. Rather than using a typical DC grim and greedy CW formula, Stargirl follows the tone from the movie Shazam. Now I'm going to go into the DC comic book character of Jade, which I favor in a crossover with CW Stargirl. Jade is the protector of the magical object called the Starheart, which was an invention by the Guardians of Oa, same Guardians of Oa that gave Hal Jordan his Green Lantern. The Guardians of Oa then later abandoned as a failed project the heart in the heart of a star. Jade is also the daughter of Alan Scott, who is the original human Green Lantern and former wielder of the Starheart, which he somehow obtained, which later gets passed on to Jade. Jade proudly carries her family's legacy. However, Jade has seen her fair share of triumph and tragedy over the years. Jade continues to serve as a hero protecting the cosmic power source known as the Starheart alongside her twin brother, Obsidian. Jade's real name is Jennifer Lynn Hayden, and she is depicted in the DC Comics as the girl with green skin. During her DC comic book run, Jade became close to the Green Lantern Corps member and Justice League operative Kyle Rayner. Kyle and Jade's friendship evolved into a romantic relationship, but the pair went through many ups and downs. Eventually, Jade and Kyle realized their schedules as heroes made it difficult for them to maintain a relationship, and they ended it. Jade's body can harness the mystical force of the Starheart through the shaped heart birthmark on the palms of her hands. With the power of the Starheart, Jade is able to create green energy constructs similar to those of standard Green Lanterns. Jade is also able to use the Starheart's power to fly like Green Lanterns. Jane and her brother, Obsidian, are connected by a low-level psychic link. 
Lastly, Jade inherited from her metahuman mother the power to manipulate the behavior of plants with her mind, as well as the growth of plants with her mind. So she could do two things, manipulate the behavior of plants as well as their, the growth of a plant with her mind. With the release of CW's Stargirl on television, it would be nice to see the character of Courtney recruit to her team someone with social issues and powers that do not need an enhancement from Courtney's gift, but could be enhanced by the Green Lantern, which is something Courtney on the TV show now possesses, or did until her stepfather took it away. Anyway, if what I just said was confusing, forgive me. I was trying really hard to come up with an intro to why I think Jade and Courtney should be on CW together in a crossover, and that was the best I can come up with. So let me give you my thesis. DC Comic Books Jade needs to be in CW Stargirl a crossover because of her relevance to the group that Stargirl has created in CW, the connection Jade has to Green Lanterns, and her unique power set. Jade's powers are more significant than the members on Stargirl's team. Why? Well, her powers are connected to the Guardians of Oa. The Guardians of Oa led to Hal Jordan and his ring, as well as other plans that CW have, as well as HBO has, for furthering the story of the Green Lanterns. Jade's story can connect Stargirl and all the other various projects that are in development right now for television program purposes. That's point number one. Point two, Jade's relationship to the star could help people understand Alan Scott's connection to the whole Green Lantern's core. And remember, Alan Scott was the original first human Green Lantern. Point number three, Stargirl's team seems to be the representation of the DC comic books Infinity Inc. Group. And it would be against continuity of the comic books to not include Jade, who is a founding member of Infinity Inc. Finally, I want to wrap this up in a conclusion by saying, as a result of Jade's green skin deformity, Jade, if depicted on CW, would be a child that would be hidden from the public because of her green skin deformity. And it would be interesting to see Stargirl become friends with a girl with that level of shyness. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like, comment down below.